Pride, tradition, excellence. We the people. We. The Washington Tattoo. Greetings, I'm Mark Riley, and welcome to the Washington Tattoo Podcast, where the world's musical traditions come to life. The Washington Tattoo is an international music and arts festival coming to the Washington, D.C. metro area. Our podcast explores the lives and stories of world-renowned musicians, dancers, producers, choreographers, artists, educators, arts advocates, and those who serve our cultural communities at large. For more information and donations, find us at www.thewashingtontattoo.com. Now, please enjoy this episode of the Washington Tattoo Podcast, sharing the power of the arts one story at a time. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode number two of the Washington Tattoo Podcast. Today, we have Jim Kilpatrick, MBE, just as the start of the World Pipe Band Championships would have been taking place. Uh, We have Jim as a special guest talking about what's going on now with everything from COVID to teaching online to trying to stay inspired and then what we can do in the future. So folks, I really hope you enjoy this episode, episode number two. All right, greetings, everyone. I have Jim Kilpatrick, MBE, who won his first drum corps uh, world pipe band championship at the age of 15 with Shots and Dykeheads, Caledonia Pipe Band and has gone on to uh, win a record 19 World Drum Corps Championships. 15 of these titles have been won as the leading drummer. Uh, Jim is a 16-time solo drumming champion and holder of the Champion of Champions titles, uh, which he's won three times. Jim is also a sought-after educator and consultant and teaches all around the world, including the Royal School of Music, London and Glasgow, and also at the Percussive Art Society International Convention. Jim instructs at the Royal Conservatory of Scotland in Glasgow, where he holds the the post of Principal Percussion Instructor for the BA of Scottish Music with honors. He is also an appointed examiner to the Scottish Qualifications Authority. And Jim is also a proud endorser for British drum company Hardcase, Randall May International, and Remo Drumheads. Jim, your incredible resume and your personal resume is unbelievable. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to speak today. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to talk with you, Mark, as always. Excellent. So um, I'm a huge f- guy that likes to focus on where people get their initial inspiration from. So could you share with the listeners who maybe your first inspiration was and why? Yeah. Um, well, I had several guys that, that inspired me as a youngster, and it's, it's really, it's funny because I was, um, I, I started drumming or taking lessons when I was nine year old, kind of nine, nine and a half, ten. Um, so it's quite unusual, but when I listened to music, I never, I never focused on the words of any songs. I always do. I, I only heard the rhythm. I only heard the rhythm, and that's what I focused on. So um, even when I was playing in, in, in groups and gigging around uh, the UK, uh, we'd play songs, and I would never know. I'd never know the words. Mm. I didn't need to because I wasn't a singer. But uh, it, was, it was all about the rhythm. And, and so then when, when I started to get more, more into it, um, I love big band and I love jazz, which is unusual for an 11, 12 year old kid um, in those days. Um, but it was just the simplicity of driving the band. So in pipe band terms, um, certainly the, the, the one, the greatest inspiration was uh, Alex Duthert, who was the, the, you know, the master. Uh, Master pipe band drummer who mm-hmm. took, took drumming, pipe band drumming um, to a different level. And I, and I doubt whether it would be where it is today if it wasn't, wasn't for him. Um, but uh, musically, I, I, I started doing drum clinics um, when I was really young. And there was two guys that were, were, on, were, that were on kit and they played big band and jazz, they played some of the they played some of the biggest with the biggest big bands in the world. But one one guy was um, 
Andy White, who then went over, to, lived in Scotland, mm. in London, then went over to the US. Um, and another guy was Bobby Orr. Um, these guys were both inspirational to me because it was people who I was up close to and I wasn't listening to on an audio um, situation. And I could actually, I, I, got, I got the feel, and I actually got more into it when you're standing there close up. So um, Alan Guther, for sure, is, mm -hmm. is the inspiration of my life. But um, people like uh, Bobby Orr and, um, and, um, and Andy White. Uh, and of course, when I started to get more technical myself and listen, listening to more of the technical stuff, uh, Buddy Rich was, was the one, I think he's probably in everybody's, uh, mm -hmm. most people's list. So uh, Buddy Rich from, from, from that side and also from the pipeline side, um, definitely Alan Duffer uh, was a yeah. two different positions, both diff completely different fields. I mean, those are two of the most legendary historic drummers you could ever bring up. And I, I think that's incredible because I think you, you knew Alec uh, growing up as a kid, correct? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, um, I, I joined Alec when I was 15. He, Alec was the leading drummer of, of Shorts. And um, so I joined the Shorts Corps um, when Alec was leading drummer at 15. And, and I played there, that was 1973. I played with Alec until 1980. 1979. So, yeah. Then Alec had um, a, Alec used to do all the drum clinics for for um, for Premier at that time, and uh, so that was the drums he played. And uh, so then Alec um, he he started taking me on the drum clinics. So we would we would be driving up and down the motorway down to England and doing like these football stadiums, not inside but in the the, the conference centre. Um, a, and we would then do all the drum clinics together, and that's when we—that's where who I actually met Bobby Orr and Andy White, mm. and and, of, and and all the others. So um, yeah, it was it was great times. It was great times. It's amazing. I mean, those are the legends that you you know people hear about that today, and to have that personal connection, I think, with him and be able to kind of be taken under his wing. I mean, that's. That's like a dream come true for any kid who ever picks up the sticks. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I knew it then, and I, and I, and I actually appreciate it more now. Mm. Uh, not that I didn't before, but um, you're right. Just I, 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 I sometimes wonder. I'm thinking every kid should have the opportunity to be in somebody's presence, mm. like Alfred, and um, just to. to um, yeah, to have him in my life at, at such an early age, um, it was it was an inspiration there, and it was a learning process about um, drumming, but in life in general, just everything was bigger. Yeah. Everything was larger. Than that. If you were sitting in a room and Alan Dutter walked into the room, you could just see the room just lighting up like it, 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 he brought everything to a completely different level. Um, wow. He was, it was a, he was a very special person. Yeah, it's incredible. I always think of my instructor, Nick, when he would walk into a room, I mean, you could feel the presence on him. And it was always one of these things where he taught me a good bit about drumming, but his lessons were really about life. And that's where I feel like you and I definitely have a, a connection with that, that level of appreciation for, of course, music, of course, drumming, but we had that mentor early on in our lives. And that's why I say to all the kids now, I, I say to them, drumming is part of it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the life lessons that you learn that, that makes you a better drummer as well um, is, is, is the other part of it. So, um, I, yeah, just, 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 I was so fortunate. I was just really fortunate. I can't, I can't tell you. Um, uh, that's great. I think, I think the older I get, the, the more I appreciate that I had that opportunity. Incredible. So, I mean, this leads into the next question pretty well. I mean, you've been a part of a ton of great musical ensembles, you know, great drummers, great musicians. Um, can you speak on a little bit why you think the pipe band activity is good for youngsters to join? Uh, 
one of the one of the things that that um, that is great for for youngsters and as you go into adulthood, uh, so young adults, if you like, um, for the pipe band game, it's it's a safe game. It's a safe game for kids to be in uh, because the adults will always look after you. Um, that's just, and it's it's not designed that way. It's just they, they will look after you, but. Um, the other thing is when you when you start learning drums, you're learning the technique, you're learning the grip, you're you're listening to what your instructor is telling you. So it's all about it's all about that grip. It's all about getting the basic basic rudiments, um, playing them the way that you get taught, and, and that's that's all important. Um, but I think the big the big um, the big change is when you go from a learner to actually playing, joining a drum corps in a band, in a band that competes. And I, and, and I know there's lots of bands that don't compete and they're no less, you know, they're no less for it than, than the bands that do compete. But um, I think once, once the youngsters get that competitive nature running through their veins, mm-hmm. and so it'll be the same with VCI, exactly the same, and, and all the competitive um, organizations drumming wise around the world but once you get that um, competitive nature um, that takes you to a different level because you can't just take things at your own pace you've got to go at the same pace as everybody else in the drum corps and the pace of the band so obviously the better the band probably the faster the pace so that 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 um it gives you a competitive nature without being aggressive um, because it's not an aggressive game. So you can be competitive, but you can be competitive um, because you need to then start um, learning things, playing them properly, and um, working also working as a team, which is which is huge um, because a lot of kids can can do stuff they don't get the opportunity to play in a team like that mm. or an ensemble. Um, so anyway, I, um, I think that's, that, that's, that's probably the big, the big thing for that I think about um, like young kids and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. It also teaches them that um, you can't win every time you go out because a lot of the time you might be lucky enough to win and, and sometimes you're not going to win. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so in a band situation, I think it's, there's more people to share the disappointment if you don't win. Uh, if, you're on a, if you're on a solo or it's just a single instrument kind of competitive um, thing, if you don't win, you, you, you take all that on yourself. But mm-hmm. if you're in a band, there's somebody there to put their arm around you and just say, hey, next time. Yeah. So, uh, so a group of you, 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 you share, you share it, and 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 you, and it makes everybody grow, but individually and and together as a group. So yeah. there's many lessons, and I think, uh, but you know, safety, competitive nature, learning how to win, learning how to lose, um, and dealing with that, and moving on from that. So yeah. That's great. It almost feels like it's a big brother, big sister kind of mentality, right? And it's definitely a family and, you know, it may not even be blood relatives. Maybe it is blood relatives, but when you start playing at a certain level after putting hours and hours of dedication in, you can definitely feel the connective bond between all the players. And I think that's something that's always really powerful. Yeah. I think so. Um, So we talked a little bit about this already, but I mean, you have an incredible story and I love hearing about people's stories and how they became who they are and, you know, why they did certain things or how they were led to be how they are today. So you're a huge teacher. Uh, you love teaching. Can you start to talk a little bit of what drew you into teaching? Um, you know, the first time I ever taught somebody, um, I think it was 11 maybe 11 and a half year old mm-hmm. and I, um, I, I was getting, I was in a class, I was in a pipe band, my very first pipe band called Whitrig Colliery that moved on to Kenneth Colliery 
And uh, my uncle Tom was the leading drummer of the band and who was teaching um, classes before the band practice uh, started. So obviously I was going to, um, I was going to these classes. And, and it, was only, it was only Tom that was doing the, the teaching that was on his own. And um, so I would be sitting there, but it sometimes got a little bit busy. And he would just uh, say to me, he would ask me, he says, Jim, you know, can you, can you take this guy and just take him through some rudiments and teach him, you know, take him where he is and, 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 and teach him some of the, go through the stuff that I've already given him, etc." So it was not by accident, but it was just by circumstance that you happened to be there, uh, even though I was, um, the guy I was teaching was, I think, about 60 year old, or he was a lot, or he seems 60 to me. When you're 11 year old, you know, everybody, <laughs> everybody older is really old. Um, so I, um, yeah, I, uh, I started doing it that way, and then it became just a thing that I, that I would do every, every week um, on, on a very, very small scale. So um, uh, then after that, I started teaching in, in different class situations outside, not in schools or anything like that. It was just all private teaching in different classes. Um, and then again with Alec Dutter, um, we, he was doing schools all over the world. And he, um, he actually said to me, he says, oh, I'm doing a school in Canada. How would you like to come over for it's a two week school? Two weeks school now, you never get two weeks school, or hardly ever. Um, so Monday to Friday, then the weekend off, which we went away and judged competitions in Canada, mm -hmm. and, and then we would have another Monday to Friday, five days. So that was my first really big, um, big teaching job, if you liked. Yeah. And, and so um, then after that, I just started to get invited um, all over the world. So I've, I've kind of taught. I've taught myself around the world more times than I, than I can count. Um, but teaching is not for everybody. Um, you, it's, you know, teaching is something that people, some people find natural and other people, um, it's not a great experience. I always had a great experience teaching, teaching people. Um, I, was, I was much more patient when I was teaching in that, that situation than I was in a drum course situation because of the competitiveness. Um, mm. And, um, you know, you can put, you can put pressure on people when you're in a drum corps, um, but it's not necessary to put any pressure on people when you're, when you're, when you're teaching them. So but yeah. it was something I, I, I grew into naturally and um, I, um, I'm, I, even now I'm, I, I love it like I did it, like I did to start with. Yeah, I love it. Incredible. So you have tons of students, obviously, around the world. And I know as an educator, there's that idea of, you know, when you're teaching and you're giving back, you also feel like you're getting something in return. So when you do see your, your students succeed, and you have several students have really, really have skyrocketed. How does that how does that make you feel as a teacher and as a mentor for your students? Well, First of all, I, I do. I have so many of of uh, I call them my boys. It's a kind of a kind of not not an in-house job, but it's, it's when when you play in my core, you're family, and you you never cease to be family. You're always family, and um, a lot of the a lot of the guys that I would work with, I wouldn't say I taught them. Well, I'd like to say I taught them, um, in the same way that I like. Stuff that taught me, um, and um, I, I used to say to people, it, it, "It's not me sitting down with you; it's you sitting down and, and, and taking everything in." So there was lots of guys who left my drum corps to do their own thing, and, and other guys, other leading drummers, would come up and say, "How does that make you feel?" I mean, you're losing, you're losing these guys. I'm saying, I'm not losing anybody. I'm gaining. Mm -hmm. I'm gaining something from this because there's no better feeling in the world is when you work with somebody and they get to the point where they do exactly what I did. You, you, they, they flew the nest and they, 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 they took on their own thing and did things a little bit 
the same, but also a little bit in their own way as well. So first of all, um, so I don't have any preferences for for how they play and where they come in the prize list, but um, from a competition side, I get nervous for them. I get nervous for them in the same way as I got nervous when I was playing. It was like almost it was almost like me being up there playing. And uh, so my heart would be in my mouth all the time uh, when I was competing, just because I wanted them to get through it and do this, do the job that I know they could do. Um, so I got very nervous um, for them, uh, probably more nervous than they got themselves. I don't know why that is, but it's the family thing, isn't it? Um, but when, when in, a, in a concert situation or a clinic situation or just a, just a performance, um, I, everybody was much more relaxed. So when they went into overdrive and did things really, really good, um, I, 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 it was, I smiled. I just smiled. And, and the best thing for me is actually looking around the audience at their reactions to some of the things that these guys are doing. Because um, I say, they'll, they'll take what I do and then they'll grow arms and legs. They'll, they'll put stuff onto it. And I, that's when I smile and go, oh yeah, okay. Uh, that was great. So I, no, it's, it's great to listen to them competing and it's great to listen to them performing in a, in a non-competitive uh, arena. So uh, very proud. And you know, there's not one that, that there's no one that that can't that they don't go out there and, and make a good um, um, job of what they're doing. Yeah. They're, they're, they're respected as well. I, I mean, that's the thing I feel is, you know, you have this mentorship and you had it with Alec, he gave it down to you and you pass it on to your students. And I, that's one of the the things for me, if we were going to the percussive arts convention or we're going to any type of other drumming event and you start connecting with people, you can start seeing that similar spark between the folks who, who get that level of, of the game, you know, because yes, winning is definitely very important. Playing with excellence is very important. But when you start to see above those clouds and you start looking at the people who go, wow, they're invested in their students. They're invested in their students' lives. They're invested in the progress of that individual, not only just from a musical point of view, but from, again, like you said earlier, that life point of view. And that makes making music and building musical relationships, I feel that much more important. No, oh, for sure. And, and you're right, the, the, the uh, Percussive Art Society the, um, is, is a classic example where all, where everybody comes together, the, the young and the old, the, the mm. students and the teachers. And there's, there's, there's both sides of the coin because they, they, um, we're fortunate enough to hear all the great players, um, but we're fortunate also to bring in the students that have been raised by the great players. And, and you just think, wow, what a great connection uh, to have this all under the one roof. Uh, yeah. so, yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible. Um, so switching a little bit of gears here now, I've always been a big fan of history of drumming and history of, you know, how certain scenes became what they are. So there's been a pretty strong relationship in the pipe band world between Scotland and the United States. Could you speak to a little bit of that relationship? Yeah, I mean, Scotland and the United States, um, a pipe band is a, is a pipe band. And, and the, the, the pipe bands in Scotland work exactly the same as the pipe bands in the USA. You've been there, you've done the tattoos, you know the you know the drill, you know the you know all the all the routines. And um, so years and years and years ago that uh, we never had bands really traveling to the USA or vice versa bands from the USA traveling over to Scotland to do the Edinburgh tattoo. It was mainly mainly military based and it was it was military, probably mainly from, from the United Kingdom. Um, so um, there's been a, a just a, 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 everything has been infused with 
travel has made it all possible for sure. I mean, we were, were well, we used to work, we used to live in a, a smaller world. I think the world has just got a little bit larger now <laughs> in terms of traveling. But um, so you would you would find well, first of all, we would have in, in Scotland some of the um, uh, some of the bands would bring in drummers from the USA. Drummers would fly over for the whole season. Mm. Or just fly in for two competitions and maybe the world championships with possibly the competition before it. So relationships were getting built in that level as well. But now where bands are, and that, that's that's combined with bands actually getting together and playing full performances. Um, so there's been a lot of friendships that's um, that's growing because of that. Um, so. Uh, and there used to be playing wise years and years. I'm talking about many years ago. Um, I think I'm fair to say that there, there was probably a little bit of a gap between the level of uh, of players, the level of bands mm -hmm. from Scotland um, back to the USA. Uh, but that's not the case anymore. And I think with the, with the fact that that we can get drummers and pipers from the USA um, over to play with us. We would maybe guest with, not me, but other people from here would, would guest with um, with uh, USA bands and competitions. So that that's led to a lot of the, the top of the grade, all the grades are, are, there's not much, there's not much, if any, probably there's no gap uh, whatsoever now. Mm. Uh, between some of the bands, and um, so in a good way, it's it's the change has has been good for the for the for the USA bands and yeah. and Scottish bands because they've they're getting some of the top players over, but in the same way, when they come over, they go back over to the USA and they pass everything on that they that they learned over the years. And that, that slowly but surely brings a level of the playing of, of the USA bands. As I say, the format of the bands are all pretty much the same, mm -hmm. uh, all down to them, how they, uh, how they deal with the musical side of it. I think it's interesting too, because uh, another, another big mentor in my life was John Bosworth from the Air Force Pipe Band. And I remember he had also a relationship with Alec Duthard as well. And I know John Quigg, is a student of John Bosworth. So I remember first kind of getting in, being the fife and drum guy and starting to learn about this whole pipe band world. And it was just mind boggling to me because I mean, I felt like I knew my rudiments. I felt like I knew I, I knew how to play, but these rhythms were just so fast and the, the blending of buzz strokes and dead strokes and open rolls was just so foreign to my ears. And what really got me was when I would hear some of these American guys play and I would hear American rudiments kind of thrown in with Scottish rudiments, my mind was kind of blown. But then I started to really kind of get this, you know, understanding of what you're talking about this, you know, going to one place, getting some information, soaking it up, bringing it back, putting it kind of in your own recipe for how it works with your own pipe band. And I, I'm, I love what's happening in the pipe band world now, and not that I can speak as an expert or anything, but I can now really start to say, wow, that's got kind of some Swiss influence in there. Okay, that's really got some traditional pipe band, you know, dot cut rhythms. Well, that's got kind of almost like a funky groove to it where it's, you can almost hear kind of a drum set on the back if you're hearing the way that the, the writing is composed. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of where, where things are right now. You know, that, that goes back to what I was talking about with Alec Butter. Um, and I, I actually did a tour of Basel with John Bosworth. Um, was it the Netherland Piping Drums? Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so John Bosworth was there and we, we, we yeah, we, we sat down and had a couple of lines and we spoke about the time that Alec went over and he, he visited John. I think he stayed in John's house. Mm. Uh, and at the same time, Alec would um, be heavily influenced by Dr. Fritz Berger, mm -hmm. who came up to the band practice, to the, the drummer's practice one night. Wow. 
So Alec, as well as getting into the, the American rudimental scene, mm -hmm. uh, he at the same time uh, was uh, really entrenched in, in what was happening with the Swiss Basel drumming. Um, so, and Alec took a lot of the moves, a lot of the sounds, and um, decomposed them and recomposed them into um, his own style mm. using some of the sticking, but in the, in the, in the Scottish style. And it's, it's funny you say about, um, you, you, you're thinking, wow, that sounds like almost playing like a drum kit. I, I, would, I remember going back years and I'd do a drum clinic and I'll play. And the number of, there was so many guys, drum kit players would come up to me and say, it sounds like you're playing jazz. <laughs> and I'm thinking, really? I remember a man, he says, you just have that, it, it just, not me particular, but the, what you're playing, the way you play it, just has that swing. Um, yeah. well, it's not the, the, um, the, heavy, the heavy industrial rudimental stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, but it's quite funny how you saying that, and, and I and I look at you playing, uh, and I look at all the Swiss guys uh, and other guys from around the world, and I'm also going, wow, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they may be turning around, oh, well, you know, that's just what we do, and I'm thinking, no, 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 that's what you do, you do it great, mm -hmm. what we do, so. Another great thing about you talking about the relationship between USA bands, Scottish bands, it also introduces everybody to um, the diverse world that they live in and in, in, in marching bands. I include pipe bands in that kind of. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. It's funny. The first time I was doing uh, some real research on the Basel Fosnacht, I had people actually making fun of me over there. They're like, you're studying this? I go, yeah, this is incredible. And they go, this is just our carnival. This is what we do every, every year. Why is this interesting to you? And I said, you know, quite honestly, you're watching history. You're watching literally this tradition that's been around forever. And, you know, if it's only living in this one little pocket, people are not going to know about it. But again, you know, Dr. Berger, Alec Duther, you know, yourself, John Bosworth, um, you know, Nick Antanasio and Jack Pratt, these guys who really, you know, in the 1950s and 60s really started coming together and built almost this international brotherhood of, of you know, drummers. Absolutely. 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 And, and that's, that's when the world uh, started to get much smaller in, yeah. in, in the drumming world. So... Uh, as a, a performer or an instructor, do you have a, a, a greatest musical memory? Uh, well, you know something? The first time I won, won the World Pipe Band Championships was the first time I won the World Drum Corps Championships. It was all in the same performance. Um, and I, I always remember my my first worlds. I always wish I always remember my first world championship win. Um, and I always remember my my last championship, major championship win, um, which was 2016. Um, and it was with it was uh, with a band called um, uh, the Spirit of Scotland. Mm -hmm. And and this was a one year project where we got um, top papers together. Um, and I, I was left to get a drum corps uh, together. I had a few guys that, that were with me anyway. And then I, I, I made a few calls and right away, all my old guys, all my old boys, mm -hmm. um, they were all right back. They went, we're done, we're doing this. I ended up with 12, 13 snare drummers, um, nine, 10 drummers and a, and a bass drummer. And, and, uh, they were all my family, my friends, guys that we, we all we all grew up together. So I I think that's I think that's uh, even even with all the, the world solo drumming championships, um, I think that last performance with the Spirit of Scotland um, will stay with me forever. I, and I know it's the last one, so it's pressure, but. Um, not because it's fresher. I, I just, um, 
it was so great to, and I, mean, I think it was the UK championships or UK championships who won the, the drumming. Mm. So, um, and that was the first time a drum corps had ever been put together. I went out on one season and actually won a major championship. So um, wow. that will stay with me. That's yeah. incredible. So you're a seasoned traveler, you're a seasoned teacher, performer. This is definitely something that, you know, you definitely can sometimes feel that burnout. But so could you share, like, what are some things that keep uh, Jim Kilpatrick's batteries charged or keeps you inspired? First of all, I never get tired. I never get tired. I, I, um, I, I have a, always have a, a, um, a, a, a kind of refreshing thought with my drawing. Um, I sit down and I actually have a pad that, that sits next to me, a writing pad. <clears throat> and I'll sit and practice something. I don't know if you do the same thing. Do you ever practice and you actually don't know what you're practicing? You're just, you're just playing. I mean, yep. it doesn't, doesn't mean anything to you. You're not, it's not a routine. Right. It's not a set routine for sure. So we're just, I'm just, I just play around and then one thing leads on to another. And then I, I, I suddenly I come into something I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's quite good. So I just kind of doodle around with it for ages, way too long, but I doodle around <laughs> for ages. And, and then I just say, I'm going to write that down. And I actually have the, the pad right here. And, and I just scribble the lines and I write it down. And then I, and then I just, close a book again. Um, but I, so I never get tired. I certainly never get tired of, of, um, of, of drumming. Uh, I think the good thing for me, thankfully, my hands are in, still in great shape. Well, I say that, I think they're in great shape. For me, they're in great shape. <laughs> uh, which relaxes me when I'm playing. So I, um, I don't, I, there's no pressure, there's no challenge to pick the sticks up ever. I, I, I feel like it's like I'm 17 year old again. Mm. Um, because everything that I do is there. I, 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 I'm not stopping, I'm having, having to rehearse little movements, although I do just as part of my practice routine. Mm -hmm. um, so the good thing about it now is I, I, I don't need to be playing six nights a week or four nights a week at, set practices which I loved to death but now that I, now I don't need to do it um, it's probably a lot more everything's a lot more relaxed so that's why I don't get tired there's, there's no pressure um, I can go and play and you know if I make a mistake I make a mistake who knows mm -hmm. who cares? Uh, it doesn't matter yeah uh, so that so that's that's that there's, there's just no pressure um, and Everything's still working, thank God. I love it. Uh, Dominic Cucci and I would talk about this all the time, and you have these thoughts where you just you just write something down. And I always think it's great to obviously learn other people's music. It's fun. You learn how they play it. You try to copy what they do. But I always try to insist that my students learn how to write their own stuff. And, you know, you obviously play someone else's, you know, marches or their solo pieces to get a better understanding of what high quality is great. But really, if you only play someone else's music, you're just regurgitating their music. So I love that you have a pad and just you start playing and something comes out. And that's that creative part of the brain that just makes things kind of just happen. And I, I love that. And I feel I do this the same exact thing. There are little pieces of no, scratch paper kind of all throughout my office with, you know, four counts, two counts, eight counts of just something. <laughs> the amazing thing for me is I sometimes, I very rarely look back on, on the stuff that I've written down because I'm always progressing to the next point. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's in the past that occasionally I will flip back a couple of pages and I look at it and I, and I, and, 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 and I play it and I'm thinking, what was I thinking when I played it? <laughs> what? And I just thought, how did you ever come up with that? Not that it was difficult or inspiring or, or, or out of this world. This is something like, 
totally different. And uh, or, or otherwise, I wouldn't have written it down. If it wasn't totally different, there'd be no need to write it down. It's only right. things that are, um, has a different shape or a different emphasis or a different phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and anyway, different. Uh, then I'll write it down. And then when I when I sometimes occasionally do go back, I'm going, Jim, what were you thinking about? When you <laughs> and sometimes I go, that doesn't even make, make any sense. Um, but you're right, and when when you play other people's stuff, I love playing other 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 people's uh, drum scores. Uh, I actually don't play anybody else's pipe band drum scores ever. I mm. never. Alex Duffer, I do, yes, because mm. I got brought up in that. So sometimes when me and, and somebody else, particularly if we're in the same, we're in the same core, we were in the same core, uh, we would play one of his marches or a Suspey or, or a Real, mm. which is fun. And uh, so that's just reminiscent in the past. But uh, so I never play, I never, apart from that, <clears throat> I never pick anybody else's music in, in the pipe band world and play it. Um, and when I play, um, when I play any any Swiss material or or um, fife and drum material, I'm always then worried about because when I write something, I know what's in my head, and the the so the composer of, of those parts. Mm -hmm. I wonder I wonder what was in their head, and, and I'm thinking, have I changed this? And also, I worry. I don't worry. I I wonder if somebody else is looking at me and saying, ah, that's garbage. That's nothing, that's <laughs> nothing like that should, that, that doesn't sound anything like that should sound. Um, so anyway, that that kind of worries me. So it's fun, but I also, I'm a little bit apprehensive of, about, about playing uh, your kind of stuff in front of you, for instance. I'm, I'm fearful of you going, yeah, Jim, I just don't give up your daytime job. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. I, I've been uh, I've been reluctant to really dive in deep with pipe band drumming because of that exact uh, feeling. And so during coronavirus, I said, you know what? I have to get off my butt. I have to start start doing some of this. So I started working on some pieces. You gave me some great pieces to work on a couple of years back. So I've kind of messed around with that. But I started also recognizing I'm, I've, I jumped into the deep end of the pool before I learned really kind of the basic marches. So I took a step back and I started actually working on just, you know, mast bands, you know, Black Watch, uh, you know, uh, Scotland the Brave, the real kind of traditional types of marches. And it was funny because... Jim Butler and I are always messing around together on, on Facebook and he shot me some marches and was playing these, these marches that he had written for his son. And I'm going, you know, this is very humbling right now. I feel like I'm a, an accomplished drummer, but really I'm, I'm, I'm not even an adolescent yet when it comes to pipe band drumming. So I've recognized my skill set in pipe band drumming is maybe about, I'm about 12 to 13 years old where, you know, I'm in my mid forties when it comes to American style. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case, but I understand. Uh, pipe band drumming is it's like everything else. It's it's um, it's the same thing. It's like every every craft. Every craft is easy when you know how to do it. Yep. So I, I, I always worry, and I, I actually almost to the embarrassment stage of, oh man, I don't even want to do this. Um, but I, do. I, I remember years ago. Alphonse Greater, you remember Alphonse Greater? Absolutely. He invited me. We, we, we've done a few clinics around, around Europe. And he said, John, why don't you come over and play in Fastnack? I said, I would love to play in Fastnack. I said, I don't know if I can. He said, no, 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 you can. And we went through some stuff. So he sent me about four or five or six marches. Um, he says, this is what we're playing. Um, we start there, we finish then, and it was all arranged. It didn't happen at the end, but anyway, it was all arranged. And I was, and I'm thinking, I've got to memorize this stuff. <laughs> you know? um, and I know memorizing is just repetitive playing. You do, I mean, you know, it's only muscle memory, but um, it's, it's much easier for me to memorize a uh, Scottish style of drumming than, than uh, a foreign style of drumming, if you right. like. Right. Um, right. So that, 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 that put the fear of God in me, I have to tell you. 
<laughs> all right so a next question here um do you have any advice for music teachers you know with what's going on right now you know trying to keep themselves uh pushing themselves or keeping their students inspired well right now that is challenging times for sure uh, without a doubt um and also the world is a is a much more fragile place than, than it was so um, I think with that, I would um, I would certainly keep the instructors. I would I, I would be saying to them, keep focusing on teaching the right things. Don't change, don't change anything because what was working before will still work. It's when you start to change things for any reason, then then it may not work as well. Um, so I would definitely keep focusing on on teaching. The right way and and the right things. Um, don't make things too much of a challenge, because people are challenged enough. Mm. Uh, don't make it don't make it too much of a challenge and keep keep um, keep the fun in the playing for the students and let the fun element um, help them progress. Mm -hmm. So rather than progress through, I mean, you can progress through different ways. Different teachers have different different styles, uh, but I think right from now, I, I think if you if you make it fun, I think students can pro progress really really well uh, without having the the you know the thump in the table. Um, uh, so yeah, in competitive moments, it can be. You can, you can afford to be tough on people, but right now, I don't think you need to be tough. I think you need to be kind and, and, be, uh, and just be positive. Encourage them to make a mistake, if that's the right thing. It's a kind of reversal of what we, we teach, but don't, so what I'm saying is, is, is um, let them know that when you make a mistake, that's all in the learning process. Um, make a mistake when you when you know that you've made a mistake, then that's when you can that's when you can rectify that mistake. So right. um, that's part of the learning process. But um, I think now that because of lack of activity, lack of 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 um, your, your your friends round about you, um, I think it's important. And we are in a in a we like this. We're one we're one on one on our computer screen, and it's. It's hot. It's it's lovely, but it's horrible in the same way that we <laughs> don't want, it's not what we it's not what we're used to. It's not how we were brought up in a in a drumming. So, um, just try and make them that the, you know uh, teach as teach the things that you you always teach. Do it properly, um, and make sure the student always feels good about what they're doing um, and whatever instrument they're playing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what I would say to teachers right now, to be honest. Great. So um, can you share any words of wisdom uh, or a phrase or a quote? Uh, we, we all go through different seasons of our lives, ups and downs. So if you're ever getting feeling like you're feeling stuck, do you have any kind of words of wisdom that you could share with us? Um, yeah, first of all, become unstuck. And then um, there's, there's three words that I... I I've used for years and years and years. It's a little, it's kind of a little phrase of mine. Um, and the three words is um, look, listen, and play. And I break that down to, particularly if you're in a drum course situation, that's what we're talking about. Or, or, or in a, a, a rock band, a jazz band, or anything. The, the, for me, the principles of, of um, performing along with other people is look, listen, play. I actually had some t-shirts made up of that as well. And, and I had some people wear them. And I sometimes wear it on a thing. So look at, look at who's around you. Look at how they're playing. Look at the stick height of your leading drummer, if you like. So the leading drummer's got his sticks in, in that position. You gotta, you gotta play exactly. If you mimic exactly, mirror, um, you're a leading drummer, keep your eyes 
on his drum. I'm not saying you keep the well, in pipe bands, we actually do. We turn our heads. We don't look straight ahead. We kind of a little bit more kind of um, a little messier. We're much more messy than you guys. I think so, it's or, I think it's organic. Yeah, well, probably, I think you're probably right. So you look, and then you listen. As well as looking at what they're doing, you listen to how they're playing. You listen to how they're phrasing it. You listen to how they. You listen to the accents. Um, you listen to the phrasing. Everything to do with that sound. You listen to everything. So the first two things that you look, you listen, and the next thing is you have to play it. And I always say, you know, if you can't hear it, and um, not so much if you can't see it, but if you can't hear it, you're less likely to, to play it. Um, so I would say if I, if, if I get unstuck with, with uh, become unstuck in a classroom situation or a drum corps situation, I just kind of stick down and I just say, okay, look, listen, play. This is what we got to do, three things. Once you do that, we're well on the road to doing what we need to be doing. Great, that's great. Uh, so last couple of questions here. Um, if the current you could give advice to your 20 year old version of yourself, what would you tell yourself? Oh my goodness. Um, I would tell myself to um, work hard. I remember when I, when I, um, when I was 20, um, I was obsessed with drumming. Uh, I used to actually, in, in, in the school, I, 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 at one point, I played soccer before mm. football. But I played soccer, I played soccer for the school team, the county team, and, and um, at one point, tried for the under 16, um, well, I was under 16, uh, Scottish schools. And um, so I was also at the point where I needed to know where I was going to play football or where I was going to um, be a drummer. And I kind of calculated it quickly that footballer, unless you were the best and you lived a long while without injury, um, your career could take a, um, yeah, come to a dead end. Mm -hmm. Where drumming was, was, was much more, um, uh, there was more longevity in, in, in drumming. So I would definitely say um, if I was a 20 year old, listen to music. The number of people that I teach nowadays, and I, I, I give them examples of, listen to Benny Goodman, listen to some of the big jazz guys, listen to some big bands, and try and get that musicality into your playing. I think nowadays what happens is we're all, we're all trying to be faster, louder, fancier, um, which is great. Technically, it's great, and, and, and I adore it. I applaud it. But I think I would be saying, listen to different types of music and, and fill yourself up with all that emotion um, and phrasing, even if it's not what you end up playing, you need to have that inside you. Mm. So listen to other people playing. Listen to the people who don't sound good because that will actually give you an example of what doesn't sound good. Right. Yeah. That's another aspect to it. But, uh, uh, but just listen and listen to what, listen to what people are saying. Um, I've had something and, and, and uh, it was a phrase the other day that the most dangerous person in a room is a person who sits back and says nothing but thinks a lot. Um, so it's, it's kind of, uh, don't shout too loud. Don't, don't certainly shout about yourself too loud. And um, so listen to that. And, I, and my mom actually told me the best lesson that I've ever learned. Um, and she said it from whenever I started getting into bands and being successful. Uh, she said, Jim son, she always calls me Jim son. She says, Jim son, she says, never blow your own trumpet. 
She says, because a trumpet always sounds sweeter when somebody else blows it. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing I would say to um, a 20 year old. Uh, well, it's more than one thing, but you get the guess. Um, yeah. I think, I think a lot of people are, are, are coming on and, and they're just stacking everything to play with as many, as many strokes as you can fit inside that, that time signature. Uh, and, it, and the drumming becomes lost because there's no music, there's nothing else, there's no phrasing. It's just actually very difficult sometimes even just to, just to listen to it, to be honest. Yeah, space is also music as well. <laughs> it's definitely music, so never, never give that up. Uh, you need to realize that, yeah, silence is, is, is the best thing. <laughs> All right. So last question. Um, any upcoming personal or professional projects on the horizon to, for, uh, for us to look out for? Well, um, I run a business, Junko Badger Percussion, as you know, um, and that is, um, is growing, growing well, it's growing daily and um, spearheaded by myself and Fiona. And, um, and we also have Rachel on board now as well, uh, although not physically on board right now. So um, from the business side, we're, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, well, um, we brought out, I've been involved with British Drum, I'm endorsing for British Drum, as you know, and uh, we brought out a new range of pipe band, snare drums, tenors and basses. Um, and we, we, again, we came to a kind of an abrupt halt with the pipe band season, but although that's not physically happening, um, we're we're working at trying to grow the the pipe band business, and, it's, and, and that, that's going very well. So a lot of the time is is dedicated to um, to doing that as well. Uh, a few new things um, for the business is up and coming. Um, and the other thing that, that I've been uh, I've been doing this for I think forty years. Um, as I've been writing a book, but I have a book that's going to be this side. There's now going to be several books. So I think one of my, my, my next big big personal projects, uh, apart from working with the, the guys at British Strong, which is really exciting and, and quite a, a, a great learning curve for me as well, personally, is um, to put uh, all my material into several books. So it will be um, certainly a rudimental book, standard rudimental book, but pipe band rudiments and how we do, uh, and then phrasing books, and then a book of drum scores. So um, yeah, that's, that's the next thing. I just need to disappear for, for a while. Um, it's all there, I just need to disappear for a while and put it all together. So that's one big thing that I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to. And that should have happened years ago. Uh, but um, you know we're, we're so busy I just never never had the chance so uh, mm. this is a good time yeah that's what's happening around the world right now people who have put off these projects for years and years and years are going well I have some time I can focus on this thing that I know I should have done 20 years ago <laughs> Well, and I'm, I'm excited to see the product. That sounds like it's going to be fascinating. So, Jim, I just wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time today. I mean, your dedication to excellence, you're, you're, such, you're inspiring, your story is inspiring, you're an incredible ambassador for the pipe band community and the traditional music world in general. Um, and you also continue to be an example for so many of us out here. Um, and quite honestly, it's been an honor, my friend, to have you on this afternoon. So thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, thanks, Mark. You're the gentleman. Yeah, and the other is mine. Thank you. So, folks, if you want to find out any more information on uh, Mr. Jim and Kilpatrick MBE, you can find him on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and also at www.jimkilpatrick.co.uk. Thanks again, Jim. Thank you. Greetings again, everyone. We just wanted to take a second to say thank you to Seif Studios for their creative media. If you want to find out more about Seif Studios, look them up on www.seifstudios.com. We'd also like to say thank you to our educational partner, ProLogic's Percussion, American-made drum pads. 
they're doing a special discount code for our listeners today. So if you go to www.prologicspercussion.com and type in TWT20, you will receive 20% off your entire order. So thank you very much for tuning in today and please check out our supporters.